So um, we're starting our next week on gas laws. We've gone through and already talked about a barometer, how to measure pressure, the variables of volume, pressure, temperature, and amount of molecules that affect gases. We now know that STP is standard temperature and pressure and should recognize those numbers. Uh, standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, which is 273K, and standard pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury, or one atmosphere. Then yesterday we talked about Boyle's Law, learned the relationship between pressure and volume, and we made the graph. And then today we're going to focus on a Montan's Law, sketching the graph and doing the math that goes with pressure and temperature. So then the last thing tomorrow will be Charles' Law and similar uh, temperature and volume, sketching a graph and doing the math. So we're actually almost done with our gas unit. Uh, last week we can cross out. Today, uh, or sorry, yesterday we did the Boyle's Law practice problems. Those are posted. And today we are going to finish the Amontons Law lab. And in the other classes we actually were able to start the Charles' Law. So. Um, let's take a look at what we did on page um, 7. So this is already posted as a separate video. We collected our data on temperature versus pressure. And we saw that as temperature goes up, pressure goes up. So we actually already talked about um, making the graph that our uh, temperature, which we controlled, goes on the x-axis and the pressure, which we measured, goes on the y-axis. We talked about slope and how to calculate slope. We also saw two new words, inverse and direct, and saw that since both of these go up at the same time, that would be a direct relationship. And then this year, for if you're in geometry, um, I'm requiring that you do these on the test, and if you're in algebra, these are extra credit. But regardless, next semester, everyone will be able to do this when we are in our physics unit. So what's new today we're going to um, complete these practice problems here, which are similar to yesterday's Boyle's Law problems. The difference here is that instead of pressure and volume, a Montan's Law is pressure and temperature. Okay. So today we have pressure and temperature, and what we found in the lab was that they're directly proportional. If one goes up, the other goes up as well. So when we write that in an expression, it looks like this. Pressure is proportional to temperature, and in an equation would look like this. Notice that it's slightly different than boils. These have the one and one on the same side instead of flipped over. Okay? So pressure and temperature are directly related to one another. When I cross multiply these, I then end up with pressure and temperature two on one side, and temperature one and pressure two on the other side. So this is not like yesterday. Yesterday for Boyle's Law, we had, oh come on, here it is, right? One and one on the same side. That's not like that today. Today is P1 and T2 and P2 and T1, and that's because this is a direct or proportional relationship. The other thing we have to watch out for here is that we have to be in Kelvin. Okay? So when I am talking about the temperature, you must be in the Kelvin temperature scale. The reason for this is because if I plug in zero degrees Celsius, which is standard temperature, anything times zero is zero. And so that would indicate that my pressure is zero, but that's not true. When it's freezing outside, you can still breathe. Pressure is not zero. So we have to be in the Kelvin scale in order to do this math. So remember one more time, to go from Celsius to Kelvin, you simply just add 273. Okay. So you're going to need to do that on the next page of practice. So let's get started with an example on page 9. Just like yesterday, we're going to go through the same steps. Step one is to read the problem. Step two is to identify the variables. And then step three is to use the equation to solve. Okay. So if you do this every time, 
uh, should bring you to the correct answer. And yesterday I said you could use the equation or the proportion. The same is true today as long as you show all of your work, including units and cross-canceling. So, step one says read. Okay. A gas has a temperature of 100 degrees Kelvin at a pressure of 700 millimeters of mercury. What temperature is required to increase the pressure to 800 millimeters of mercury? Okay, I read it. Now I'm going to use my powers of reading to identify the variables. Keyword here is it has a temperature. So that would be my initial temperature, or T1. It has a temperature at a pressure of. So this is also my initial pressure. What temperature? That's indicating my new temperature. I'm trying to find it. So that's T2. And that's the temperature that would be required to increase my pressure to 800 millimeters. So that's P2. So right away I can already start to predict what should happen if pressure is increasing then my answer is right if my temperature also increases, right? If pressure goes up, temperature goes up. Okay, so let's write down our variables. Temperature 1 is 100 Kelvin. Pressure 1 is 700 millimeters of mercury. Temperature 2 is unknown. And pressure 2 is 800 millimeters of mercury. At the top of your paper is the equation rewritten. I personally prefer to start with the one that's already cross multiplied because then we can just solve it in one step. So I'm going to write the equation down. Pressure 1 times temperature 2 equals pressure 2 times temperature 1. And since I'm looking for temperature 2, I need to get that solved by itself. In algebra, it, whatever you're multiplying by, to move the pressure to the other side to solve for temperature, I need to do the opposite of multiply, which is divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by pressure 1 to solve for temperature 2. All right, so now my equation is solved for temperature 2. So it says temperature 2 will be equal to pressure 2 times temperature 1 divided by pressure 1. So let's plug our numbers into that. P2 was 800. T1 was 100. And P1 is 700. Okay, so this is the equation. Those of you who are choosing to use the proportion method, if my initial temperature is 100 and I want it to go up, I need to multiply by the proportion of pressure that is greater than 1. And 800 out of 700 will be greater than 1, so this will go up. So now I can use a calculator. 800 times 100, all divided by 700. Um, let's just keep the four values, even though my example is terrible and has one significant figure. Let's imagine that I fix this and put 0, .0. Uh, then I would keep four, so that'd be 114.3. And then don't forget your unit, millimeters of mercury cancel, and I have Kelvin. Okay. Okay, this is our example. I'm going to give you about four minutes per question, so I'll pause the video um, and you can solve it on your own. I'll walk around and give you help and then um, unpause the video and watch the rest of me solving it. Okay, so I read the question, what new pressure will a gas at 740 pressure have if it drops from 50 Celsius to standard temperature? I've written all my variables here, so I'm looking for pressure. Pressure initially was 740. I'm going from a temperature of 50 to standard temperature, which is 273. I need to make sure both of these are in Kelvin. So when I add 50 and 273 together, I get an initial temperature of 323. So temperature is dropping, like it says, it's going down. So if temperature goes down, I would expect my pressure to also go down. Okay, so if your answer went up, you have it plugged in wrong. So my initial equation 
P1, T2 equals P2 times T1. I'm solving for a new pressure, so this time I'm solving for P2. So to get P2 by itself, I would divide both sides by T1. And so that cancels out. So my solved equation here is P2 equals pressure 1 times temperature 2 divided by temperature 1. So my initial pressure of 740 is going to change by the ratio of temperature 2 over temperature 1. Temperature 2 is 273 and temperature 1 is 323. So those of you using the proportion method, right, my temperature goes down, pressure should go down. So 200 out of 300 is less than 1. So that multiplied by 740 will go down. So in my calculator, then I have 740 times 273 divided by 323. And um, I, this 50.0 only has three numbers, so I can only keep three numbers on the calculator. So that's going to be 625. And then my unit, all right, don't forget units, the Kelvin cancels, so I have millimeters of mercury. Okay. Okay. The next question also says what new pressure? So same setup with different numbers. Okay, number two says what new pressure is needed to change a gas at 740 millimeters of pressure and 21 Celsius. So it's at those and changing to 100. So a new pressure would be P2. My gas is at 740 and it's at 21 degrees and it's changing to 100 degrees. So keywords of at and to. So now I'm going to write my variables down. I'm looking for pressure. My initial pressure is 740. My new temperature, or sorry, my initial temperature is 21. And my new pressure is 100. Okay, so, but remember, we have to be in Kelvin. So I want to add 273 to both of these. So that will be 294 Kelvin and when I add to this one, that'll be 373 Kelvin. Okay, so now I have my temperature. My temperature is going up. So I can predict that my pressure should also go up. Okay. My initial equation I'm going to copy down from the top is pressure 1 times temperature 2 equals pressure 2 times temperature 1. I need to rearrange this to solve for P2, right? That's what I'm looking for. So to get P2 by itself, I need to move temperature 1 to the other side of the equation. Since I'm multiplying by T1, I need to divide both sides by T1. Okay. So now I'm going to plug in my variables. P1 was 740. That was my initial pressure, and it's going to change by the ratio of T2 to T1. So T2 was... 373 Kelvin and T1 was 294. So those of you using the proportion method, I'm changing this number by greater than 1 because temperature goes up, I want pressure to go up. So I have 740 times 373 divided by 294. Okay. Um, I can only, whoa, whoa, what just happened? Oh, it didn't divide, it multiplied divided by 294. There we go. I can only keep three numbers, so that's going to round to 939. I can check and make sure this makes sense. My temperature went up, so I would expect that my pressure went up, which, which is what it did, and the units here then are millimeters of mercury. Okay, my hint for the next one, number three says what temperature so this is going to be similar to the example at the top. I'm solving for a different variable. Okay, so on number three, what temperature is needed to change a gas that's at standard temperature and pressure to 800 millimeters of mercury? So I'm looking for a new temperature. 
It's going to allow me to change it from my gas of standard temperature and standard pressure to a new pressure of 800. So my T2 is what I'm looking for. Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. Standard pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. And my new pressure is 800. So now I can again predict my pressure is going up. The pressure goes up, temperature should go up. I start out with my equation of pressure 1 times temperature 2 equals pressure 2 times temperature 1. I'm solving for T2. So to get T2 alone, since I'm multiplying by pressure, I divide both sides by pressure 1. So that cancels itself out here, and so now I have my equation. And I'm going to substitute these in. So pressure 2 was 800. And the temperature I'm trying to change is 273. And my initial pressure was 760. So those of you using the proportion method, I want my pressure and temperature to go up. So I would multiply by 800 over 760, which is greater than 1. That cancels in my calculator. I have 800 times 273 divided by 760. I can only keep, uh, oh, I can keep four. I'm going to keep four numbers, so that's going to be 287.4. The six rounds that up to a four. So 287.4, and my unit here is Kelvin. Okay, last example. Similar to number three, number four is also asking for what temperature. So it says, question four, what temperature is needed to change a gas at 60 degrees Celsius and 1,000 millimeters of pressure to 800 millimeters of pressure? So what temperature is my new thing I'm looking for? I'm changing it because it's at this, so that's my temperature one and pressure one, and it's going to a new pressure. So now I'm going to write my variables down. I have temperature two is what I'm looking for. Temperature one is 60 degrees Celsius. Pressure one is 1,000 millimeters of mercury. And pressure two is 800 millimeters of mercury. Remember that we had to be in Kelvin, so I would add 273 here. That gives me the 333 uh, Kelvin. Okay, So now I can solve for my temperature. It's going to be the same as the equation above. So pressure 1 times temperature 2 equals pressure 2 times temperature 1. I'm solving for T2. So to get that variable alone, I would divide both sides by pressure 1. So now I have my equation, and I'm going to substitute in pressure 2 was 800. T1 is 333 Kelvin, and pressure 1 is 1,000 millimeters of mercury. Okay, those of you who use a proportion method, I wanted, oh, I didn't even talk about it. My pressure is going down, so I also need my temperature to go down. And 800 out of 1,000, right, that's 0.8, which is 80%. So it will be 80% of 333. So I get 266.4. There's only three numbers here, so I can keep three, 266 millimeters of mercury. Oh, sorry, nope. Rogers, no, those cancel. I was looking for temperature, that's Kelvin. 266 Kelvin. Okay, thanks for uh, working on this with me. Uh, here we go.